Portrait Artist of the Year, Season 9, Episode 4, and another challenge for me as a recapper, and this is a recap, so if you want to watch the whole episode, go to Prime Video, or you can still find some episodes on YouTube, but it's never, they're never really in order. Let's get started. And please leave a thumbs up and subscribe, and thank you to those loyal watchers who've been watching who are helping me with my so count. Uh, if you watch, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'm doing my best. So he here's our first one up. I really like this one. I, I, I always like this device where someone will use a rectangle and put the figure on one side. I, I just I just love that. I don't know why. It's It's a device I enjoy. Wow, look at that. That's really strong too. So these are the self-portraits, and we get to see these are the things that, um, that got them onto the program. The judges have said they want to see more from these artists. I love the coloration of this. It's really captivating. So I'm curious to see what he does today. Wow, look at that, too. A lot of depth in that. That's Now, he's not going to have the kind of time he he had here to resolve the whole image. So that will be interesting to see today too. This is interesting as well. Oh, and I should say, I do believe that this person is a stitch artist, meaning she's, she's gonna sew today. So she's at a disadvantage because she's not gonna have the time to do what, what she needs to do, but that's gonna be interesting. This is, um, this is interesting to me, but I, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. There are times when I'll see an image and I think, oh, I remember painting that. You know, I was at that stage at one time. Oh, this I really, really enjoy. I am partial to paintings that use water and swimming pools. If you Google that, you're going to see a plethora of them. It's really enjoyable. I love that floaty kind of dreamy kind of thing that can happen. This one's a little bit hard to see. I I can't really see what's going on there, but I can respond to that. I like how she filled the whole page using complementary colors there. Yeah, that looks good. Say yes to life. Wow, good for her. You know, I'm always going to kind of be in the corner of someone I identify with. And my guess is this is a woman who is approximately my age, and this is her time to shine. All right, our first model up is Bruno Ton Toniani. I looked these up phonetically, so I hope I have that correct. Uh, he is a Italian choreographer, and I think he's known in the States for being one of the judges on Dancing with the Stars. I'm not sure about that, because I, I, I might have watched that program once. I, I can't remember. Four hours in, the artists turn their easels around, and we get our first look. And he is going to pick one to go home with him, and that will be an honor. Here's the stitch artist. That's pretty incredible to do that in stitchery. It means that you've got to have the sketching skills, so you got to get that blocked in first. Then you got to thread your needle and go up and down a lot. Make, uh, when I think about it, it makes my shoulders and my, my arm hurt. That's a lot of stitching. And here, with a close-up, we get a nice look at what would probably develop Unfortunately, maybe over a month's time, certainly not in four hours, there is a lot of depth there and a lot of understanding of color. So I enjoy that. And I realize I just said the word so, which I'm trying to avoid. I'm going to try to keep count on my fingers how many times, but I know I'm going to do it. I'm trying not to. This one, this one is hard to talk about because it's, it's, uh, well, how do you, Okay, this is someone who is matching what they see to their palette. There is no color swap out going on here. So there's no insertion of other colors that could be replaced instead of the colors that they're trying to match. And because they're trying to match, and I suspect it was under bright lights, everything got a little bit washed out. And that's what happened here. And I'm surprised because remember his self-portrait, he was, I was really intrigued by the color he used. And it was an inventive use of color. Here's the third one. Again, we haven't quite struck a likeness. There are features that are similar to Bruno's, but does is it, you know, would you instantly recognize this as him? No. Once again, we don't have any color swap out going on at all. 
Thankfully, they put a little, they've used cerulean blue behind, which I always like behind the orange tones of a Caucasian person. It's a fairly large piece, so that's ambitious. Um, none of them make my heart sing and make me say, oh my gosh, I, I'm, I really want to see more from this painter. Most of them are paintings that I'm, I'm not going to remember as soon as this recap is over. And I'm looking for something that kind of hooks you in makes you say, oh, wait a minute, this person is doing something that I'm interested in seeing more of. And maybe they will in a few years' time, but, but not right now. I don't know what the roses are about. Doesn't matter. Uh, moving on. Let's see which one he picks to take home. He's got a tough job. All right, he picks this one. She's thrilled. She should be thrilled. Yay. I found that particular grouping underwhelming. I don't know how you felt. Because hashtag Joe is always wrong, and boy, am I going to be wrong in this episode as well. Helen Sharman, uh, she is, oh, she's a British chemist. How cool is that? Wow. So they put her behind her, this rainbow thing. Uh, kind of like it was emanating from a prism of some kind. And I thought, well, that's interesting. You know, her accomplishments are so incredible that uh, I, I hope that they're mirrored somewhat in her portraits, which will be hard to do. Here's the first one up. Definitely looks like her. This is a stronger field already. This again is matching to what they saw. So I am so, I'm just, I want to pick up my cerulean blue and put some blue underneath those eyes. I want to pick up, oh gosh, like a redder tone in order to make those, those, those cheeks. Everything is just very pale and washed out. It's completely accurate, but I don't, and I know that oh, your portrait should be accurate. Oh, I, yes, I remember her self-portrait, which was also very dark and tonal as well. So that's her style. And you have to stick with your consistency of style. And she did, she really did do a great job on the likeness. It's a good size. Everything is resolved. I really do like the coloration in the, in the reds on the shoulder. So, oh, I think I'm never going to be able to stop saying so. It's very difficult. Here's the last one. Oh no, this isn't the last one in the group. This is the second one. This one I think is pretty extraordinary. Once again, we have somebody who is not really interested in being a colorist. And that's that really is fine because this does have a variety. What this person's done in a way is they have made color value swap outs because the grays and neutrals that they've used have not gone into gray and neutral. If you squint your eyes, look at the gray behind her head. There's a lot of blue in that gray. And likewise, if you look at the oranges, if I squint my eyes, let's see. Yeah, there's quite a bit of red in those. And I think the browns were mixed. She's right on the verge of just be, having it be completely neutral, but she kept her neutrals somewhat colorated. That's probably not a word, so it works. Now this one is much more yay, what I, you know, my style and, and the kind of painting I really like. Because I like being able to see somebody's brush strokes because it says I'm a painting. I like when someone looks at individual patterns and assigns a color value to it and then makes the shape. And you do that over and over again until you have forms and those, those forms will create a likeness. And that's exactly what's happening here. It's, it's either called carving a painting or building a painting, but that's, that's what's happening here. And you can see there's hardly any outlining going on. Everything is built from, if you squint your eyes, you're, let's see, what can I see? If I squint my eyes, I see very few line gestures. What I see instead is blocks of color, and those blocks of color then create forms. That's pretty exciting. The jacket behind is something that was there on stage and has great meaning to her, so it's incorporated here. Does it work compositionally? I'm not so sure about that. But 
this is the client and what the client wants, and that's important. So this is the one she picks to go home. I don't understand it. I would have picked the one with the yellow background, but I'm finding more and more that the people who choose the paintings to go home, they're often not the one I would pick. Let's just say that. Next one up is Yolanda Brown. Yolanda Brown is a British musician. She plays a saxophone, and she brought it with her today. I love the color that they put behind her. That is just so beautiful. And maybe she knew, or maybe they tell her to wear something that will enhance the, the background that they have in mind. I'm sure they do. Everything, yeah, this is a television program. Nothing is left to chance. Four hours in, the artist turned their easels around and she's gonna get her first look. Wow, there's some, there's some pretty big ones coming up here. All right, there's the first one. Wow, that's really, really, that's excellent. The, you know, in order to be on this program, as people have told me who've been on the program, is you have to choose, are you gonna do the face or are you gonna do the body? There just isn't enough time to do both. But in this case, they did, which is pretty amazing because to scale up to that extent, it really slows you down because you have to mix so much more paint. And that takes time. And then you've got to do you use bigger brushes and everything is just sort of exaggerated. And I would think under the conditions of pressure that exist in this setting, um, going smaller would be a, a better idea. But I suspect if you're entering this program, you're probably going to stick with what you usually do. You're going to stay as much in your comfort bubble as you can so that you have some degree of success. So I'm guessing that he, this is not scaling up for him. I'm guessing that this is sort of a size that he uses. I wish there was a little bit of more variety of coloration in the blacks when it comes to the chair and her body, but I'm getting a little bit picky here. Here's the next one. This has is much more painterly and interpretive than the first one. Uh, does it look like her? I always bring that up because it is called Portrait Artist of the Year. And when someone comes to you for a portrait, they want to see their likeness. They do. You're doing it for the ages. It's probably going to be a piece that's going to be passed down over time. So usually people want something accurate. I find this more interpretive and therefore I think it works better as a painting than the one we just saw but you have to consider the client. What does the client want? Now, normally that would come out in a conversation you would have with your client, and you would ever, and, and also the client probably would have come to you because they've seen your style and they pretty much want you to, it's a collaboration, right? A collaboration between you and the sitter. And you sort of know that before you take on the commission. Here they're coming in blind, and so all they can do is produce in their style. I do find the saxophone a very difficult element to include simply because of the shape. It's a difficult shape. So here's the third one. Extremely ambitious because what we have here is we've got the head, the hands, the chair, the sax. It's a lot. It certainly works as far as a composition and this person is very, very accomplished. Again, very monochromatic. I, I, I find that puzzling as a painter because when you have a palette that is just so full of choices of color, I understand neutrals are super important. And I'm a great fan of Morandi's. I probably say that name wrong, but you know, which is all neutrals. Now from far away, it's very, very accurate, but doesn't have a lot of impact for me. I know I'm being picky here and I know that's wrong. These are just reactions to paintings. So let's see which one Yolanda Brown picks. I have absolutely no idea. I think she'll pick that really big one. Oh no, she picks this one. Yay, I'm glad she picked this one. I thought of them, this was the finest painting. It's certainly the one I would have picked. It Simply because it, it's sort of joyous in a way, isn't it? and a little bit free-flowing, free -flowing. <laughs> not free-throwing. <laughs> that would be something different. That would be basketball. Judging begins. Now in the judging, these poor folks, they couldn't tell anybody that they were coming today, so for a month they've known this is gonna happen. They have to get to London. They can't stay in a familiar place. They have to schlep all their stuff to this 
venue. They've got hot television lights. They're interrupted for interviews. They have two hours to work in the morning, then a lunch break, and then two hours to work in the afternoon. Then I don't know how long it takes for the judges to deliberate before they come back and do the final judging. So I would need to bring a pillow, a duvet, and maybe a comfort animal as well, because this would throw me so far off my game. Here is the first one up. This is one of our finalists, and I'm happy to see her here. This is, uh, this is something I'm gonna remember because it has a little bit of interpretation to it. It isn't just an accurate portrait, whereas this one is a very accurate portrait. Almost seems a little bit like a poster to me in a way. You, that poster kind of painting that you, you see, for example, for, for movies or really used more in commercial kind of art. And this one, this is, this is, this is the bomb. This is just beautiful. I, I just think that tells me so much about her, her intelligence and her interior life. And, and the use of neutrals is just beautifully balanced against the color on that shoulder. Wow. Final judging begins. And this is the time when we get to see the self-portraits next to what they did today. The self-portraits, they had lots and lots of time. Oh good, that's the one we couldn't see very well at the beginning because it was at an angle. It's, oh, it's a cat. <laughs> that big white shape in front is a cat. Oh, I didn't realize that. All right. Well, I, I just don't think she had the time to do what she would be able to do. I think she would have resolved the, the figure a lot more than she was able to do in the time. I just think she ran out of time. But she'll be judged on what she did, not on what she didn't do. This one, yeah, I really, really liked his self-portrait. Oh, I really had high hopes for that self-portrait. I wonder if he had gone smaller, if... No, it's, it's, not a, it's not a size issue. What it really is, is a light issue. He had really good lighting in terms of drama on his self-portrait. And in this program, you don't have dramatic lighting. Everybody, you know, it's very well lit, but you don't have a specific light source, which, which really helps define forms. Oh, I remember, yeah, this was this, this gal. Oh, she's good. She is gonna be a tough, she's gonna be tough to beat. She's, wow, look at that. It's almost photorealist on the self-portrait. And then what she did today is much looser. And of course, you know, I like the looser one, but but that's interesting to me. She'll, she'll be able to, to handle the final commission. Now, which one will they pick? Hashtag Joe is always wrong, so I don't know. And in coming episodes, wow, am I wrong. It's, it's almost shocking, <laughs> but let's see what they do. The winner is da, 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 this one. Yay, I'm really excited that it's this one. Uh, I actually think this might have been the best. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this was the best painting of the day. That seldom happens on this program, but I delight when it does. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paints wet, mass for value, mix for color. Those of you who are keeping track of my little efforts to not say the word so, how did I do? Probably not very well. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.